In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to easily, in just two lines of code, do the best audio or video to transcript that you can do in Python, leveraging the new MLX library from Apple. For those of you who don't know, the new MLX library is a suite of tools that function as a new deep learning framework to do things that you would normally do in PyTorch or TensorFlow on Apple Silicon. It's designed by Apple to be used on Apple products and really leverage all the hardware things like the CPU and the GPU to their fullest capacity on Apple products like a Notebook Pro. In this video, I'm gonna be presuming that you have a Mac notebook or some kind of Mac product that has an M-series chip in it. If you don't know if you have one, go ahead and look at your system preferences, and if it says Intel, then this video will not work for you. It's only gonna work if you actually have an M-series, so an M1, an M2, or most recently an M3 chip in your device. If you have that, then stick around, because I'm gonna show you how to use Whisper on your MLX device to its fullest capacity. Now we're gonna do all this by working with the Whisper library from the MLX Explorer, or MLX Examples repository on GitHub, which I'll link in the description down below. In this video, I'm not only gonna show you how to use this library, I'm gonna show you some of the most powerful features in it, including things like word timestamp encoding, meaning you can not only have a time encoding for a segment of audio, maybe six seconds or so, you can also have time encoding and probability scores for each individual word in your transcription, separated out by each individual segment. I'm also going to show you how to convert models from their PyTorch version into their MLX version, and also how to skip that step entirely by simply loading up models that are already done for you on Hugging Face, the MLX community repository. So stick around, and at the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of how to implement all these things in your workflow so that you can start doing automatically transcription on audio or video using Python and the new MLX learning framework. To start working with Whisper MLX, we're gonna have to clone the repository. So we can do that by running the following command, git clone, and we're gonna clone this repository right here, which comes from ml-explorer and mlx-examples. And it's gonna take just a second to download everything. Once it's downloaded, we can go ahead and change our directory and navigate into that area. So we're gonna do so by saying ls just to look at everything. And then we're finally gonna say cd mlx-examples. And we can say ls and this, oops, ls and we can go ahead and see what's available to us and we're going to cd into whisper whisper is the section of the mlx examples that contains all the code that we're going to need and i'm going to go ahead and open up vs code right here once i'm in vs code i have the ability now to start kind of working with whisper the way i need to according to the repository so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open up a terminal and now that I've got a terminal opened up, I can go ahead and probably should create a new environment. So I'm going to say conda create name is going to be equal to whisper and Python is going to be equal to 3.11. Uh, you don't have to use 3.11 here. That's just what I'm choosing to do. It should work fine with anything from uh, 3.10 up, I would imagine. Uh, I haven't tested this on uh, 3.12 yet, but that should work as well. And we're going to go ahead and activate that new environment called whisper. Conda activate whisper, there we go. And now everything is activated for us. So we're working within this new fresh environment. If you don't do a lot with Python, you probably don't need to do this step. I however do, so it's always best for me to work with a new environment because I work with a lot of different repositories. So now that I've gone ahead and created this new environment, I can start to actually leverage some of the code that Whisper gives us. The very first thing that I need to do is I need to install this requirements.txt file and everything that's found within it. So one of the things that you can do with pip install is you can specify dash r, which is gonna tell pip that you're gonna be installing a requirements docs.txt file. And we're gonna execute that command to go ahead and install everything for us. And this will take just a second, depending on your device, it might be a little slower. But once this is done, we'll have everything that we need to use the Whisper library from MLX all installed for us. So now that we've got everything installed, we have to do a couple other steps. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new file called, uh, it's called demo.ipynb. So this is just a Jupyter notebook. And I'm gonna go ahead and import Whisper. And the reason why I'm doing this right now is because I can go ahead and start installing uh, the Jupyter kernel right now while I'm doing this next step. 
So once we have everything installed and set up in this way, it comes time to really start importing a model. Now, when you're working with Whisper, you have a couple different options for importing models. One of the things that you can do is you can go ahead and convert manually an existing model that's provided to you. And the reason why you have to convert a file is because Whisper is taking a PyTorch file and it needs to convert it into an MLX version so that you can use it. So we have the command provided to us in the repository that is python space convert.py and you can go ahead and paste in the rest of this. I'll provide this in the description down below so you don't have to leave this page, but you can also get it on the repository also linked down below. And when we execute this, we're gonna be converting the tiny PyTorch version of Whisper into the MLX version. And because this is tiny, this is pretty quick. I'm also gonna show you in just a few minutes how to go ahead and just load up a model that already exists on Hugging Face. But once we have this done, it comes time that we can start actually using Whisper. So in order to do that, we really need to have access to a video or audio file. Now that I've gone ahead and pasted in a test.mov file, which is just a YouTube short on list comprehension, I can go ahead and automatically transcribe it. So I'm gonna create an object called text. And this is gonna be equal to Whisper. So we're gonna go into the Whisper library over here and we're gonna use transcribe. And I'm gonna pass in just one argument. All I have to do at this point is pass in a string that is the name of the file that I want to transcribe. And in just a few seconds, I have the audio or the transcription of a 60 second audio clip. So let's go ahead and see what text has available to us as a dictionary and what keys we have. So the first thing that we have is text.text. .text. This is gonna tell us just the raw text or the raw transcription. And this is really good if all you need to work with is just the raw audio. But oftentimes when you're working with video and text data, you need to have access to the time encoding. And that's gonna be contained within the key of segments. And in segments, we have access to a lot of different data. So let's go ahead and take a look at the keys available to us. Ooh. This is a list of different segments, which each has a different key. So ID is gonna be the unique ID. This is gonna tick up sequentially. We also have things like the start and end. These are gonna be the start time, the end time, the actual text itself for that segment of transcription. And we're also gonna have other things like tokens. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these segments and we can see what it looks like here. As you can see, we can see that segment one has a start time of zero an end time of one second point 64, and then it has the transcription that looks like this. So you're able to get time encoded transcription. This is really useful if you need to do things like um, alignment, where you're trying to align closed captioning to maybe a video or an audio segment. So it has a lot of different purposes. However, one of the things that came out with Whisper over the last few years is the ability to do word level time encoding or smaller segment level time encoding. Originally, everything at the segment level was oftentimes done at I believe about the 30 second mark, but in the past year or so, a lot of developments have happened. So I'm gonna copy and paste this right down here, and we're gonna pass in one other argument. So I'm gonna pass in word underscore timestamps. And we're gonna set that, it's a Boolean, we're gonna set it equal to true, and we're gonna rerun this. And let's go ahead, we'll notice it takes just a second to do. We're gonna go ahead and once again, we're gonna grab segments. We're gonna grab the first segment. We're gonna take a look at these keys one more time. And we'll notice that we've got a new key added at the end here called words. So let's take a look and see what this is. So we're gonna do text, segments, zero, words. And we're gonna print this off. So now we not only have access to the time encoding for each segment, so beginning uh, at zero and ending at 1.64, we have a little different here at 1.56, we also have a couple other important pieces of data. We have the individual time encodings for each individual word, meaning we know when each word is actually said in the transcription. This is very useful for a lot of different downstream tasks. But the other reason why I'm sharing this is because of this. We have access to the probability. In other words, if we're trying to do something like manual validation, we can take users who are doing that manual validation specifically to the areas where the probability score is a little lower so that they can go in and listen to those areas of audio a bit more closely and give us better you know, manual validation on the output. This is really useful for a lot of humanity 
humanities projects that value high accuracy over speed. So that's how you access the individual words. But there is another way to do transcription all within this, uh, this environment without even having to convert a file. So we're going to once again say text is equal to whisper.transcribe and once again we're going to pass in our test.mov. But unlike before, we're not going to use the whisper file that we converted. Instead, we're going to use one that's available to us on Hugging Face. So we can specify a path if it's sitting locally or hf underscore repo, meaning a Hugging Face repository. So Hugging Face repositories, for those of you who don't know, have a very specific structure that resemble GitHub. So we can say something like mlx community which is gonna be where all the MLX community models actually sit. And we can specify whisper-tiny. And in a second, I'll show you to figure out which models are available to you. And so we're gonna go ahead and run this, and we're actually not using the local whisper file anymore. We're actually using the whisper-tiny model that sits on Hugging Face. And once again, we can print off our text and we have the exact same result as before. This is just a little easier in case you don't feel comfortable converting a whisper file manually and saving it locally. It allows for you to leverage someone else who's already done that step for you and place the model on a hugging face. So in just a second, we're gonna pop on over to hugging face and see what that looks like. In order to find models that are available to you for Whisper, you can visit the MLX community page on Hugging Face. So we can find models by saying MLX community and doing backslash Whisper and then clicking see all the models available. Now, this is still pretty new. It's only been out for a week or so. So the models aren't too many. There's only six available to you, but each one of these strings is gonna be the model name that you pass to that repository or the path underscore HF repository keyword argument and transcribe. So we can click on one of these and you're able to see right here, you can just click the copy button up here in the top right. Of this, of this string and copy it and paste it into your repository. And it's that simple.